few days now since I saw you guys last. We finally got the concrete done. So here it is. Now I'll go over kind of all of what I had done and specified. You got a 10 inch box drain right in the center with a lot of slope. The slope starts from about 10 feet on either side of the drain from the wall off to that side, 10 feet in front of it and 10 feet behind it. So you should be able to park about a 20 foot truck in the middle over top of that drain and all of the water running off of it should slope down pretty nicely. So that's nice. We did put a sealer on this. I wasn't really sure what that meant. He's like, you want me to do a sealer on there? I was like, well, what is it? So he said that essentially what it does is it really helps with keeping it from you know oil stains um, and other types of stains that are prone to staining concrete easily. Um, he's like, it's not like you don't need it, but if you want it, it's an option. It'll help keep it in good looking condition for a lot longer, kind of protect the surface of it, I guess you could say. So that's what we went with. We went with the sealer over the whole thing as well. It is all dusty right now from all the relief cuts that they put in the concrete, which they did in 10 foot by 10 foot square sections. And it looks really good. Like I'm so happy with this. Even if I did nothing else to the shop, at all. I'm very happy with this. They took out tons of dirt, and this is all the rock that's left over that I'm gonna use actually to spread out in front of the door just so there's not a little four or five inch lip there. We've got all of that dirt that they took out of there and out of back here, and then what they did was they packed it down with rock a few inches deep, and then they laid down rebar and mesh, and then it. And so I also did the lean-to, of course, you're looking at it now, and uh, I'm really excited about the lean-to because I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it or not, and when I had originally gotten quoted, I said, no, don't worry about the lean-to, I'm not really sure if I want to do it anyway, and I was like, you know, he's already going to be here, and he's like, it's going to be like an extra 1500 bucks if you want to do the lean-to, so I was like, then let's do the lean-to. So we got that done, there's no drains on the lean-to, they did actually texture it with a smooth edge, so it looks really good it'll be nice and we've got some plans for this and we'll kind of go through some of those because some things might change a little bit as we go but i essentially want to use like half of this lean to which is a eight foot by 40 foot long lean to eight wide 40 long i'm thinking about boxing in and closing in half of the lean to basically from this front portion back to about that middle post doing half of it, a 20 foot section, closed in, and then adding a door next to the center post here in the barn that comes out into this lean-to, and then having a bunch of extra storage and shelving outside of the actual shop space. And although that's not necessarily like a, a must have, for most people, for me, it is because I have to work in this shop space and I want to make sure that when we do this, we do it right and we make it as functional and as usable as possible. And so let me tell you a little bit of perspective. So Rosine and that other truck sitting right over there, which is gonna be one of your guys' very soon. And by the way, comment down below, what do you guys wanna see us give away next? We might pick up a couple different trucks and kinda of let you guys choose which one you guys want us to give away. Anyways, those trucks are about seven foot six or seven foot eight inches wide outside of tire to outside of tire. And the whole point that I'm trying to make here is these cuts in this concrete are 10 feet wide. So from the outside of that two by four that's tacked on to the wall there that we're gonna hang our tin on, from the outside of that to that relief cut is 10 feet wide and two of those square sections is 20 feet deep. So technically like Rosine would be able to fit in this section back here between these relief cuts and you would still have a little bit over a foot of space all the way around the truck between behind it, the sides of it, and it would be able to fit and you could still technically, it would be tight, but technically you could fit two more trucks over on this side as well. Comfortably to work around them though, there's probably never gonna be more than like three trucks in here at most. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get to continuing with rafter reinforcement or truss reinforcement. So this is what we've been working on so far because all of these trusses were kind of like this. Um, nails are popping out of the two by fours at the top, the collar ties, they're just popping out. And uh, I don't like the idea of that. It doesn't seem too safe. So what we've been doing is completely like reconstructing them, sandwiching them, putting in some 45 degree cut pieces for structural support. Um, and all we're basically doing is trying to make it as strong as possible so that that roof does not continue to sag down and cause any issues. 
So what do you think? You like that? It looked like crap before. <laughs> the truth comes out. Way <laughs> Yeah, it did look it did look pretty bad before, but it looks good now. Okay, guys, a few days have gone by since Ty was here and we were finishing up some work. So I'm gonna go over a few things. I'm pretty pumped at the progress we've got on this shop. Pretty stoked, so I'm gonna go over a few things real quick. So in the corner here, we have a corner office that is going in. It is obviously, obviously far from done, but we did get some of the wiring prep done. We ran all new wiring through this entire barn for all the lighting, all of the outlets, all the switches. There's a three-way switch over there. There's a lot of stuff in here. We got a 220 ran for a welder, whole bunch of stuff. We're trying to get everything done that we think I might or might not even need at some point we want to have it ran so it's ready in case we ever do it and all i'm going to say is right now nothing's closed up so when we were discussing what to do we were like you know what you'd rather have it than not have it so if it's anything that you're like well i might use that someday but i'm not sure but there could be a chance i use it it's easier to run now than it would be if you've already got all the walls closed in and everything so it's not a big deal right now so we just went ahead and did everything we could think of that we might need for a shop space and we got it done. Now, of course, none of the outlets are ran or anything else, but that's because we're gonna have some of the wiring stuff looked over and just have it you know, looked at just to make sure everything looks good and in place where it should be. And then we're going to be hanging our tin, putting boxes and all that stuff. We do have to get a new breaker box for the corner over there because the breaker box that was in here, let me, let me just show you. It was absolutely disgusting. And I mean like bad. I mean, it was bad. Look how caked on that squirrel's nest was in that thing. I mean, it was a whole different level of nasty. So they had to pull that out and we're not gonna be obviously reusing it. We're gonna be putting a new one in and uh, new lighting, of course. We just haven't pulled down the old lighting yet, which is also really nasty inside because none of this stuff has been used for several years now. So we're redoing everything. We got all the rafters done. All the rafters are done all the way back through. So I reinforced every single truss that was in here, rafter truss. I'm sorry if I'm getting the terminology wrong. I'm just kind of, I don't really know what to call them because like they were kind of built just like, you know, almost like stick built home rafters. But then like I tried to make them into the closest thing that I could doing it DIY to make it a stronger truss. And that's kind of what I tried to do. And everybody that's seen it so far, they're like, you know what, that's way better than what it was. There's no doubts it's gonna make it way strong enough to handle what we're gonna do in here. So I feel good about it, feel much better. I got all the windows sealed off with seal foam around all the windows and all the gaps. We're looking pretty good. It's been a full seven days since the concrete was originally poured and done. So I am now allowed to pull a truck into this barn. I got the green light, I called my contractor and said, hey, when am I allowed to pull a truck into here? I wanna, I wanna do some test fitting with some things. He said, give it seven days. So Monday, you can put a truck on there. You'll be totally good to go. Just wanna make sure everything's fully cured before you go you know, putting something that heavy on it. So I think I'm gonna do, I wanna test fit Rosine in here because Rosine is gonna be hopefully able to park along this back wall over there, along the office wall. And the reason I want to do that is so if I can back Rosine in, swing her into that slot over there, which is about, uh, what? I think it's about 32 feet. And it'll be out of the way for the door that we're gonna be putting in right here, which is gonna be going to the outside lean-to for our shelving, storage, power tools, and stuff like that. And we're hoping that she can park back along here and there's gonna be just two or three feet in front of her bumper to where we can get in and out of that stuff just fine. Let's go get the keys for Rosine and see how she fits in here.
So here we are with two trucks in the shop. And maybe this will give you guys a little bit more perspective on the size of it. I mean, I've already told you it's 30 by 40, but maybe some of you guys don't really understand or don't know for sure like what 30 by 40 looks like. And obviously you could probably fit more vehicles in here comfortably if the shop was flipped around you had your bay doors. It's definitely gonna do the job for us. So Rosine, this is pretty much gonna be like her designated spot and that's part of the reason we designed the office the way that we did was it's only eight feet wide, 10 foot long. We were gonna do an eight by eight, but I was like, you know what? I don't like the idea of that long term. And my dad made a good point. He's like, here's the thing. Once you put the wall up and it's framed in, I mean, it's, it's pretty much done. It's a, it's a way bigger pain in the butt to try to add more space to it than it is to just make it a little bit bigger. You know, in the beginning, this front corner will still be usable for something and you don't need that much room for like a workbench and a toolbox. So what I'm gonna try to do is design and either build and make it look super sick or purchase something that will give me a nice height workbench that doesn't come out all the way to the door, but it comes out a decent space and then there's still a little bit of working space next to it. Let's say it comes out, I don't know, 24 inches let's say, and that'll be like a workbench and then make it high enough so I can get a toolbox that's about that same size that can slide under the workbench and then I'll still have enough room to get around it if there's, you know, for some reason, another truck or two in here taking up all the rest of the space. It would be to where it's so usable and everything's functional. And we're gonna have wiring for a welder right here on the corner post of the office space. That way it's kind of more to the central location of the shop, whether we have to you know, weld in any location in here. It's pretty favoring of the center of the shop space, but then not only that, if we did have to run one out in front of the barn here, and it wasn't something that we were gonna do inside the shop, it's close enough too to where it's not that hard to run it outside the shop. It did end up working out right about the way that I thought it would, and uh, I'm happy about that. I wasn't so sure Rosine was gonna be able to fit underneath of this garage door back here, with that bed cap, because that bed cap makes her even taller. But there's a good, I mean, I don't know if you can tell, but there's probably a good seven inch gap between that cap and the support there for that corner of the garage door. And that's, Rosine's on a seven and a half inches of lift in the front, five in the rear, 35 by 1250s with that bed cap, which makes it even taller and it, it still clears. And I did technically take measurements for this door and believe it or not, this door, Rosine would still fit. It's an eight foot by eight foot door. And even with the concrete, I did measure and Rosine is about seven foot, six inches wide and like seven foot, two inches tall. So technically this truck could pull through that garage door. Now, are we gonna try doing that? Probably not. We're mostly probably not even gonna use that back door for much more than like if I had to pull the tractor in or the mower and I had stuff parked up in front of the garage door up front and I didn't wanna move everything around. Maybe we'll use it for something like that, but it's just cool to know that a second gen or truck in general that's this size could technically still fit through that back door. It would be a snug fit. Like I'd have to have somebody out in front of me making sure that I keep it straight, but it would still fit, believe it or not. The reason I left her parked the way that she is is so you guys could see that she fits there comfortably with tons of room. I keep calling it a she, just cause it's my wife's truck. I don't know, it's, and she calls it Rosine. I, I, I don't know. The truck can be parked there and there's plenty of room in front of the office wall because we're gonna be having a door right there that goes out to that outside unit there. But then also there's plenty of room behind Rosine so when we have a door right here, even if it's like a, well, I guess it can't be that big of a door. If it's like a 34, 35 inch door, maybe 36, I don't know the exact measurement, it could still swing in with where I parked it and um, it wouldn't cause any problems. It's not gonna hit the tailgate of the truck. And then also I did leave enough room so that you can walk up and down the side of Rosine here to get in fairly comfortably and still walk around the truck if you had to. So I didn't park her all the way up against the wall to where the mirror was touching. I, I left a little bit of space so you can walk around it, um, but it fits, fits comfortably because that spot was going to be designated for Rosine because I know that half the year this truck won't be getting driven in the winter. I just thought that would be a perfect spot if I can make the office, but still leave enough room to where you can easily back the truck in here and park it over there and I'll still have two bays 
to work on vehicles if I need to. That's a good option. Most of the time, there'll only be one truck in here getting worked on at a time. But the option of having two would be nice. I really was a little bit concerned. I was like, I hope I don't put all this money into this shop and then for some reason there's not near as much room as I'm thinking once you actually start to pull vehicles into here. But it, it turns out it's gonna be very nice and functional for what we do. Definitely get us out of the weather and then hopefully soon this will be able to be heated and cooled and it'll be super nice. Let me know what you guys think about the shop space now that we've got the concrete in, the office framed up because we're gonna do vertical siding on this. We're not gonna do like a traditional drywall wall, obviously, that's why there's a horizontal uh, framework. But let me know what you guys think of the shop space, the way that we have it set up now, all the update. It's, you know, we got a lot done in the last week. We did a lot of stuff got done in here. And then also don't forget that we do have a winner for this truck coming very, very soon. We should have a winner actually within the next like two or three days, so just keep your phones ready. We don't ever, 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 ever message you on Instagram about winning our trucks in cash, so don't ever get a message on Instagram that's like, oh, you won this truck and all this money and all this stuff, and all you have to do is pay these registration fees. That's not us, Those aren't. that's not from us, so don't respond to those on any social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, it doesn't matter. If you're getting a message like that about winning a truck on any of those sites, it's not from us, okay? We have a very official way of contacting you through phone or email and verifying that you are the person that placed the order and then confirming that and giving you, you know, the paperwork to sign to claim the truck and stuff. And you don't pay us any registration fees and stuff to get your vehicle. Once you've placed your order, that's all the money you ever pay us is whatever you pay to buy your products, to win the vehicle or to get entered. That's all you pay. You don't, you don't pay us a bunch of other fees. So keep that in mind if you guys get any weird scammy messages it's not it's not real if you get messages like those from any fake giveaway companies that say oh you know we're with so and so and we're messaging you to tell you you want all this stuff if you're getting a message like that through social media it's not real thank you so much for all the love and all the support and watching we are going to be giving this truck away in the next couple of days here it's going to be getting claimed by somebody and then we're going to be able to sign it over here and hopefully the shop will be buttoned up by the time they get here i don't know it's maybe that's wishful thinking, but we'll see how that goes. And then the other thing is too, don't forget that when you purchase a monthly mystery box, you automatically get entered towards our next giveaway if our current giveaway is over. So right now we don't have a giveaway live, but when you purchase a monthly mystery box, it automatically gets you pre-entered towards the next giveaway that we are doing. So no matter what time you buy a mystery box, it gets you entered towards either the current giveaway or if a giveaway is just ended, it gets you entries towards our next one and then it just keeps building up. It's pretty sweet. So um, the last guy that won from us, he had a monthly mystery box. He'd been subscribed for a handful months. Next thing you know, he's winning a freaking truck in five grand. I mean, it's, it's cool stuff. So anyways, guys, if you want to get entered towards our next truck, it's that simple. Other than that, guys, Thanks so much for watching. You guys are awesome. I appreciate you guys sticking along and watching the videos. Those of you that do, really appreciate you guys. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.